Hi, hi everybody. Welcome for this new Jenkins infrastructure meeting. Um, we don't have, I mean, we have a few things to the agenda, but I'm not sure if we already covered them in the previous meeting. So I just want to review the different points to be sure that um, and they are covered. I saw that the first point is Jenkins as a service. I don't know who put that um, notes there, but I don't have any information regarding that. Jenkins as a service. Okay, I just put this here. Um, regarding the GitHub on CI the Jenkins as a CI the Jenkins that I I saw that you did a bunch of work there. Do we have anything missing there? I think Oleg did pretty much. Ever, I did everything. For what? So for the GitHub GitHub app on CI the Jenkins that I Yeah. So Git, GitHub app authentication is enabled. Has plugins been enabled now? I know that's so, the one that I, install, I, install, I installed the GitHub check API, but we have to restart CI the Jenkins that I go. Tim, are you there? Because you, fr you freeze. Tim, yeah, no, it's working. So I was just saying, so I installed the GitHub API check, um, but we're, we have to restart CI the Jenkins that I go. So I guess next um, Just to hold off a little bit on restarting CI Jenkins I go. Yeah, because there is a lot of activity at the moment in CI. Yeah, there's a bug in the checks API plugin that's just getting fixed. Just hold off. Okay, okay, uh, but then then yeah, because I already installed the plugin, so ping me when when it's available, and so I update the version, then restart the instance. Because right yeah. now it's not enabled because it has dependencies on other plugin version that needs um, in order to take them into account. We have to restart CI the Jenkins that I use. So um, yeah, but anyway, I see that there is a lot of uh, testing um, at the moment on CI the Jenkins that I use. So it's definitely uh, it's probably not the best time to restart it. Yeah, I'll plan if we get done tonight, otherwise we'll do it tomorrow. We are rebuilding every acceptance test harness PR. <laughs> yeah, I merged, I merged three PRs this morning. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Okay, yeah. So, uh, so Tim, I did see, and I was quite impressed, the, the table to divs transition is taking into account acceptance test harness. So you're yeah. confirming that it works. Yeah, Felix ran them all and he reported a bunch of issues. Um, and it, it's picked up one bug in core in the pull request and one bug in the promotion plugin. The rest of them have just been annoying CSS selectors and, and fixes that have been, and app tests that have been broken for ages. Some plugins have been broken for like the last, sorry, some tests have been broken for like the last 15, 16 versions in the CSS rework. And then Olivier, in terms of the load on ci.jenkins.io, yeah, it's got over a hundred in the queue right now. Uh, so it's, it's triggering our, our warning on, and ATH is the big one. Can yeah. we afford, given, given the funding that AWS has provided, could we afford to increase the number of maximum high memory that we could run from three to say four or five? Yes, we can because we are. We still have plenty of money that we can use on the Amazon account per month. So yeah, feel free to do it. Okay, we, okay, still, no. we have we have we have the budget basically. Yeah, okay. that'd be good. We could probably also cancel the app test ones too. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Sorry, cancel which which Tim? The app PRs. Oh, okay, good. So you you don't see a lot of loss if I go in and actively cancel some of those acceptance test harness PRs. No, yeah. I would just, I would just console them. If, even if, if there is really one that needs to be retriggered, we can still manually trigger that, that job manually. It will. And, and I can, I can check iteratively to see, has there been any change in the PR or is this just a rebuild because there was a change merged to the master branch? No, I think it would be better than increasing the, the VM size, the okay. number of VM. I will do that investigation. Thanks. Just to wait. Yeah, none of the PLs are needed. Like none of them. Okay, so none of them have had a current, a recent change. You've already done the look. Yeah. Great. Okay, then I'm going to just interrupt them. Thank you.
Um, I remember that I put uh, the LTS release and the weekly release. Uh, so far, uh, we don't have anything new there. I merged the PR this morning regarding adding information for the GPG key for Debian and Red Hat. It's working for Red Hat, but it's not for Debian. It sounds like there is, we are trying to read, um, it sounds like there is a, something wrong in the path where we read the, GP, the public GPG key. Um, I mean, it should be easily fixed, but yeah, we just have to look at the scripts at the moment, but it does not affect um, future release. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> we still have green, green build there. Um, regarding the automated release, we still have to work that need to happen in order to close the, the epic. That's what I was looking for. Um, this. So one minor thing is to align. Um, so right now when we do an LTS release or security release, we freeze the codes on the Jenkins CI slash release repository. But on the Jenkins CI slash packaging, we are still using the branch infra dash 910, something like that. And we should merge that branch on the master branch and then start to freeze again the branch when we do an LTS release. Um, so we should add to the process to create a branch each time we need, we need to create an LTS release. Um, so it's it's minor thing, but I think we should just um, Fetch, I mean, ensure that we can merge, we safely, we can safely merge the, the branch 900 and then to, to the master branch on Jenkins CI packaging. So it's basically the ticket infra-2660 and infra-1363. So I'll put the link in the doc. So, so tell me about the changes that will, or tell us about the changes that will occur as infra 910's branch merges to master does that change the job definitions on release.ci.jenkins.io or is it so there is a variable on release on jenkins infra slash release where we specifically says git check out that git repository on that branch um right now it's uh i mean just in the parameters and we just now instead of using that we have to use a master branch but before doing that we have to be sure that the master branch is aligned on, on infra 900. Okay. So the reason why we haven't merged that PR until now is because Kozuke was using the master branch for his release environment, and we did not want to affect his release process. So now that right. we are releasing everything from the new environment, it just makes sense to, to, to update the master branch. Now, and in terms of timing, we've got an upcoming LTS release next week. Do we do the infra 910 to master merge before that or wait till after the LTS? Um, personally, I would, I would just wait. Uh, Great. Because I okay, I like have, that. I would, I would just wait because I don't have a lot of time here and I cannot promise on, any, on my time um, for the moment. And the thing Perfect. is, while I do not expect anything that, I mean, I'm not expecting anything broken there, um, I just don't want to take the risk to, yeah, to have whatever happen. So I will not, I will not close it here for nothing. I'm, I'm not planning to work on it, but I would just update it to be sure that uh, we are aware of what we need to do there. And the second thing, um, so infra 2660 is about um, free, uh, yeah, freezing, updating the massive branch on Jenkins CS slash packaging. Um, and the other ticket is about promoting um, packages wait so the second job is the second task that need to be finished in order to close the, this epic is infra 1363 and this one is about and the same i would not so i have open prs i will not merge my prs because i don't want to take the risk to break the the current release process um but the second ticket is about promoting red hat's use and debian packages so the idea is to put them in a staging directory and only deploy them on the mirrors at the end of the process so right now we have um staging promotion from promotion from staging to there to production 
for the package of Jenkins.io website where we don't have promotion mechanism for the mirrors. So we publish the packages and then we stage the website and then we promote the website. And so this means that, um, yes, it was a little bit challenging for the Red Hat because Red Hat, um, we generate the website on, on the machine, on the, on the production machine, and we need, um, we need, um, sorry, we need to read the package, the list of packages from the production. So we don't have this. I mean, we, we have to specify one directory where all the packages are located. And so having to fetch the list of packages from two locations, the staging and the production environments, I mean, was a little bit more complicated. And so it implies a little bit more cleaning and so on. So that's mainly because of Red Hat and CS packages that I haven't been able to match my PRs, but um, yeah, it should be it should be ready now. And um, yep, I think it's Tim who put a link to the Jenkins slash slash Docker. So yeah, I'm just moving to the next point. Um, Tim, have you are you the person who put Jenkins CS slash Docker link? Um, next meeting. Not intentionally, but yes, I didn't want to mention it. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't remember adding it there. Maybe it's from the last one. Um, but yeah, is there anything blocking the plugin installation manager tool getting added to the Docker images now? Um, I don't have anything from my point of view, but maybe Alex, maybe Alex and Oleg have some concern. Well, so you, it, it's currently implemented as a prototype, right? Or as preview. And so it's not it, overriding the default. No, it's, yeah, it's, Preview. It's not a prototype. It's production ready and um, better than the install plugins. Really, um, I really wanted to put it in as preview for a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Originally, I had it in there as the preferred way, and left install plugins as the backup way. I could give it a last review, but I don't think there is anything blocker from me. But maybe Alex has some. Yeah, I'll do one more review on it, but it looks fine to me. So, but I'll do one more review and uh, put my approval in. Um, okay, perfect. And so there's just one last thing because um, in the, the two, the, in the table at the top of the document, we have um, merge policy. We have one prioritized topic, Jenkins infra slash merge policy. I don't remember anything like about that, but it was probably me, but I don't know if you have any concern um, context about that. I think we can just delete this, but. Um, Where's that? Uh, um, in the prioritized topics. So we still have the infra 9, 910. Mm -hmm. In the second point, it's Jenkins infra slash charts, mer uh, slash charts merge yeah. policy. That's done, I guess. Yeah, we can we can close this one. And uh, to, to discuss topic, we had the agent labeling and CLA Jenkins.io. I think it's done as well. So I think we can close it. Mark, do you? Yeah, I definitely documented the agent labeling policy. Yeah, so or tried to document the current practice. Yeah, perfect. So I think we are good for today. So uh, do you have any topic that you want to bring here? I guess if we oh, don't oh. have... Should we, should we highlight that we've started a proposal, a draft proposal for the JIRA uh, upgrade process? Yes, you can highlight that and it would be nice as well to share the document with people here. Yeah, that would be great. Okay, so um, okay if I share my screen or best if I don't. What do you have a preference, Olivier? Yeah, you can share your screen. That's that's great. Okay, let's see if I can find that. Okay, so here's this, and the idea is that our Jira instance is running Jira seven dot thirteen dot twelve. Hang on, and I'll share this screen, which will be officially off support at on November 28th, uh, 2020. So we need to get off that version onto a newer version of JIRA. Um, and one of the benefits of being part of the Continuous Delivery Foundation 
is that we get some free services from the Linux Foundation that is the host of, of CDF. And one of the things that they do is they support JIRA instances for open source projects. So this draft plan is trying to identify crucial objectives and proposals for what we should do in order to make this transition by November 28th. Now, Olivier is going to let me lead this one. So I would be happy to give a request to others as reviewers for the proposed plan. Right now, the crucial players are Andrew Grimberg, Brian Warner, and Steve Ira of the Linux Foundation IT team. And I just started this draft yesterday, but just be aware that this is an actively in progress thing so that we can get off JIRA 7.13.12 before no, the November 28, 2020 end of support date. And that's, yes. that's really all I had. Are there questions from people about this, about the idea of upgrading JIRA and having it switched to be hosted by Linux Foundation instead of us? So just to add, uh, thanks Mark, just to add a little bit here. Um, the idea is we try to, to, to prepare that migration in advance. So the best scenario, Linux Foundation, can um, upgrade a version for us and they do all the work here. Um, worst scenario, we have to upgrade the Jira version by ourselves before November, and that's why we start working on this now. So we are still at the ex on, in exploratory mode. We don't know how to really work with the Linux Foundation because we don't have a real process, because obviously we don't have access to their um, um, way of working, whatever. So we, I mean, we are really at the beginning of this work um, right now. Yeah, Are we so thinking about um, moving to key clock? So is, is the identity stuff with Linux Foundation still going on or is um, or so, we so 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 it's it's kind of related, but not I mean it's kind of related. The the, the, the question right now is are they okay to use our system management? Um, because we still have, this is still something that we have to discuss in the community, in the community about what we do with the Jenkins identity management. But I have the feeling that it's going to be a little bit more complicated, not in terms of complexity about the migration or whatever, but more in terms of what we do about the data here. And um, yeah, so the, the first thing is to first move uh, Jira, if we can, without modifying the identity management, and then discuss about how we do and how we work with the identity management. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to work on, on key cloak right now because it's not, um, it's not yet clear if it makes sense or not. Um, but yeah, um, the, the, the discussion will probably happen uh, while we discuss about Jira because we have to see how. I mean, if it's possible. Yeah, it'd be good to get some clarity there because like the current account management set here is very, like, it's very poor. Yeah. Um, the, system, the system in use is very, yeah. Well, well, and Tim, I would think we will want a similar plan that does a uh, identity management next steps plan, right? Whether that's a transition to key cloak or a transition to Linux Foundation Identity Management or something else. Agreed, I was I was just focusing on JIRA for this exercise. But yeah, the thing is we have to bring some clarity because even if I don't expect it to be a lot of work to, to officially switch to Geekloak, um, yeah, we just have to be sure that we don't waste our time on this stuff here. But Great. yeah. So Tim, uh, Tim and Alex, are you interested in being reviewers on this document? If so, I'm happy to share it with you. Yeah. Okay, we will do. Sure, yeah, I'll review anything. <laughs> <laughs> careful, <laughs> careful. <laughs> and while we are talking about Jira, I'm just wondering if you, you both, Alex and Tim, you would be interested to have SSH access to the machines, to the Puppet infrastructure, because if you do, um, you just have to provide your SSH key and then we can plan some uh, knowledge transfer about how to, I mean, to fix issues on those machines or how to improve or whatever. Yep, sure. It just, it's just a PR on the Puppet repository, basically, that I have to merge. Yeah, I'll take a look. Okay. So I propose to finish the meeting here unless someone else has any other topic to bring.
otherwise we can just continue discussing in RSC, which is perfect. Great. Good to me. Thanks for the time. Bye-bye.